A one-page financial plan is a requirement for a low-stressed financial future because it answers the question, am I going to be okay? What do I need to be doing next? And am I missing anything? Nobody ever really benefits from a long, drawn-out, complicated plan. Sure, you want to know that it's comprehensive, you want to know that it's well thought out and that it's sound, but it has to be actionable, and that's where a one-page plan fits the bill. In this video, I'm going to show you what a one-page financial plan looks like, how it can make your life easier, and even what it can do for you. Hey everyone, if we haven't met yet, I'm Nick Davis, founder of Brindle and Bay Wealth Management. And I'm here to show you how to retire with calmness and clarity. Be sure to subscribe if you want to get further messages from us. All right, let's get started. I'm going to show you what a one-page financial plan is, what it looks like, and what it can do for you. It's really just a high-level summary of the most important parts of your financial plan that keeps it very actionable so that you can get busy living your life and not worried about the math so much. The problem with big financial plans is that they're really big. They're long and comprehensive. They uh, aren't able to be walked out easily. Everything needs a summary. The only people that appreciate those are the engineer types. You know who you are. And for the most part, though, the general population needs something actionable. And I have found that even the engineer types still need that high-level dashboard. We want to be able to look behind the scenes and know that everything is running properly, that our calculations are good, that we're going to be okay but we need something that we can take action on and that's what the one page financial plan does. So let's take a look at a version of a one page financial plan that we use here pretty regularly and let's see what it can do for you. So what you're seeing here is a, we, we call it a snapshot. It is a one page financial plan. We used to build this on just Google pages and Google sheets and and then recently our software allowed us to, to make it a, a, a snapshot. But for you, you can build this anywhere because it doesn't have to be as fancy as this. But what's the, the key here is you'll see at the top of the page is what money means. And here you walk through an exercise about your why. What's important about money to you? Well, this family was sleeping well, creating a joyful experience and peace of mind. And our children can focus on living because we're always independent. And so when they were they painstakingly came to this answer, it was, well, we don't want to be a burden on our children. Getting to the real heart of the issue was, well, we want our children to be able to focus on living. And so whenever these people come back to their one-page plan, this is what's key and top of mind. This is an exercise that I would encourage you to do is ask yourself, what's important about money to you? And then when you have the answer, ask the question again, well, what's important about um, having peace of mind? Okay, well, what's important about sleeping well? And just keep asking that question to get to a very refined sort of mission statement. And then you'll notice there's things that are not um, uh, soft data, but more like here's my net worth and here's my effective tax rate. And here is the success and strength of my plan. And here's my allocation. So these are very high level things. It could be different for every single person, but in general, there are some key things that everybody wants to see. So we're going to move down here to goals. And this is also important. Now your brain shuts off when people say the word goals. So you know, you might say, well, what do you want to see happen? Well, Timmy is going to stop working at 65 and Tori is going to uh, stop at 62 and they're on track for that. They want to maintain a $100,000 lifestyle that's inflation adjusted. They're on track for that. They want to remodel their house in five years. That's planned. They're going to take vacation for 15 years of their retirement for about $5,000. They're going to explore having an Airbnb and holding it until next year. I'm sorry, on hold until next year meaning they decided, hey, that's something we're just going to say no to right now. And you can see that this PDF is kind of cut off here because they also have an emergency savings in retirement and it's 70% complete because this um, software just cut it off when we uh, made it into a PDF. But if you're using Google Sheets to make your one-page financial plan, you're doing it yourself, then you obviously won't have that problem. Then over to the right, we have the balance sheet. And down to the left, we have a very important thing here, which is the key assumptions and I think this is super important to keep on your one-page financial plan because you want to understand, you know, who is taking Social Security when. Here, it's imperative that they continue to save in their 401ks up to the match and max out the Roth IRAs. So they might have figured out what their custom plan is, and they put that assumption in here because that's what's making this right here successful. And they also have in their plan a conservative inheritance included at about $50,000 
in the year 2030. And um, they also thought about moving to a tax-friendly state during retirement. So that is also modeled into their plan. On the right here, we have a tax allocation, meaning their dashboard, their one page says, well, how much of my money has not yet been taxed? And this is really helpful at a high level because then that can help assist in legacy purposes, tax bill purposes, Roth conversions, et cetera. I call this a one page plan, but technically it's a one and a half page plan because you can add some other things on here. The point is for it to be very simple. And I think that this is also a key, the current tasks and the future tasks. So currently we are updating our will. We're going to verify our social security values. We're going to send in our current tax return to our planner. And then future tasks, these are things we're going to do later. We want to be reminded to look at our old life insurance policy, consider Roth conversions in Q3, evaluate the need for long-term care insurance, et cetera, et cetera. And so this can look like anything you want it to. This can look like anything that you want it to look like. It, the important thing is, is that it's actionable, that it speaks to the key points that are important to you and that are making responsible for making your plan successful. You can try to do this by yourself if you're a do-it-yourselfer or you walk with through it with a financial planner on a regular basis. But again, it wants to answer those three questions. Am I okay? What do I need to be doing next? And am I missing anything? And I'm going to share with you a bonus question that if you get past these three, you're really living your life to the fullest if you ask the fourth question. And here it is. If you get past the, am I going to be okay? And what am I missing? The fourth question that financial planners will often ask is, well, what else do I want? You can ask yourself that question. Living in that place is pretty amazing because you can say, well, what else will make my life more meaningful? What else do I want? I had a team member who she asked a client, okay, we're past all this stuff. We're using this one page plan as a way of doing reviews and talking about your plan, high level, making sure you're on track. All that stuff's good. What else do you want? And it was just silence. And he said, you know, this just came to me, but my wife and I have often talked about doing a safari. We've never done it. It sounds crazy, but I think we should do it. Listen, you ask questions like that, you really start to create that next chapter and those experiences that was the entire purpose for you saving all this money in the first place. And so I think that's a really good place to live. And if you're stuck in the math constantly, and you're in confusion constantly, you'll never really get to that point. And even as financial planners, if we don't get through the weeds of sorting it all out, you're never going to really ask that question, what else do I want? So what about you? Is your plan simple? Do you have some actionable steps that keep you in that frame of mind where you can ask those more important questions instead of the am I okay question, which is an important question? Let me know in the comments what you think. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. If you'd like to see the way that we help people to create calmness and clarity for their next chapter of life, take a look at us at brindleandbay.com. Again, thanks for watching the videos. Please remember to subscribe, hit that notification bell so that you are notified every time a new video comes out.